Good morning everyone. I just wanted to make this quick video to show you an easy way to make your own graphics using PowerPoint. So I always start with a blank slate. Um, you have been provided a template for your recent activity and you can go ahead and just add a blank slide or remove things from that slide and start here. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and add a background image. Um, whether or not you're using it for graphics or for the sake of this project, we need something to anchor it, some color or um, some setting and so forth. For our project, we're going to find a natural seam that represents one of the biomes in the world around us. So I'm going to go ahead and navigate uh, back to Chrome. And I've gone ahead and searched on Google Biomes Background. So we can find a number of images here. Um, on the left hand side and I want to apologize for having to do this on my MacBook as um, my PC doesn't seem to like me this morning which is the world of technology as we know it. So this might be really cool for the desert so I'll just click on it and I can see it here on the right side of, as well as I'm going to get several um, similar images on the right. Just choose one that you like. I'll go ahead and get that and then on my device, I'm going to right click. And at this point, I'm just going to copy that image. And I'm going to jump back over to my PowerPoint. And I'm then going to paste it. Now, I do want to go ahead and readjust it, make sure that it fits the entire screen. You can see on the left hand side in my image viewer what it's going to look like. Okay, and then one thing that I like to do, if we're going to do this, it's up to you, of course, is you can go ahead and click it, and at the top, um, on your PC, you're going to have a little bit different settings, but I'm going to make it a little bit more transparent so that I can add objects over the top in order to build my food web for this biome and or add graphics over the top so the background kind of fades away but provides some color. And you can do this in multiple ways um, on PowerPoint, whether online or um, using the desktop app. So now I need to go ahead and add some objects. Most of the time in your PowerPoint, you could say insert and you can go to photo and you could probably do photos online. However, you can see that my MacBook is old and I don't have that option. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to Google one more and I'm going to look at, I would go ahead by the time you research Let's just click. All right, so I'm gonna see lots of different things here. Again, um, there's lots of ways to get these images into our um, background. So I like this one. Look, it's got lots of different organisms. So I can do a couple things. So I'm gonna go ahead and again, I can right click and I can copy it. And I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint to show you a couple tricks here and I'm going to right click and paste and you can see I have this entire page well first of all I probably wouldn't want the whole page I would want to double click and I could crop it and I could just do one object at a time like this and crop and I could just put my little meerkat here and then I could, if I wanted to, go ahead and paste and crop again. And let's see, maybe my buzzard and hit crop. And then I have him. But wouldn't you say that's a little jacked up, my friends? Like, I don't like all that white background. So I'm going to show you a trick. So first of all, let's go back to Google. And instead of this time just copying this, I am going to save it as my slow and old MacBook decides to keep up. All right, and I'm gonna say desert organisms and change my file location to pictures and save. And now I have found this handy dandy tool that you are just going to love. 
I'm going to navigate over here to this tab. This website is called remove.bg and it's going to automatically remove the background from any image. You could do this with pics of yourself or you could do it for pics um, on the internet, for selfies, whatever, and just get the main items that you want to be able to put them and insert them on any background. So at this point, I can either click here and open my file location, or I can just drag it from the bottom here to my page. And it will automatically remove the background. Now, I can't really see really well, again, probably because I'm old, but I'm going to click Edit and look at it up close. Can't really tell what it's got going on there. So I'm going to click Erase and Restore. And I'm going to make sure with this brush I can make it smaller or larger. You can see it here. This is the brush size, this circle. I can make it bigger or smaller. And I'm just going to make sure it says Erase. And I'm going to drag it through any of these where you see the gray and white checkerboard. That is what it's erasing. So it looks like it still has all of these weird background text. Oops, I just erased some of my cactus, so I'm going to click Undo. Get smaller. Part of my snake. Okay, I'm going to go over here to that meerkat. And you would do this to the entire image. I'm going to show you another one in just a minute to show you typically how easy it is. This is just very detailed because I tried to bootleg a very complicated image. Look at that tarantula. It's kind of scary. Okay, so let's pretend that I have everything I need and everything is outlined. If I needed to get really specific, I could maximize it here to get some really good detail and I could make my brush size even smaller and come in here and make sure that I'm erasing everything I need from my image. Okay, and then of course you can make it negative again and when you're done and everything looks good, of course you just click download. Now this is a free program, so um, there are no limitations to the number of files that you can or can't um, do this to. Anyway. So here is my downloaded file on the bottom left. I'm just going to navigate back to PowerPoint once again. And so these were my sample images from before. Now I'm going to insert that photo from file. It went to my downloads file. So I'm going to navigate back to downloads. It's going to be the most recent at the top of my list. And here it is. So I'm going to click on it and go about it the same way. Now watch this. Now it's going to not look wonderful, right? Because what I was saying is this was a really complicated image, but I could go through that same process. I could double click on it. I could go to crop and then I could go up here and just take my meerkat and crop again. And he at least looks a lot better than this other dude right here, right? But I could have spent a lot more time on it. Let me do it one more time to show you typically with one object, with one image, how well that that will work. So let's go back here, go back to our desert animals. I want to find maybe just one. Okay, I'm going to try this camel. So here I have this camel. I actually want an entire camel, not this looks good. Let's try that. I like this one. Okay, I like the contrast. That's going to help. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to save this image. Camel. And I can't spell. Maybe the A doesn't work. I don't care. Okay. So my Kamal. My Kamal picture is right here. And I'm going to go back to remove. I'm going to get rid of this and refresh my page here. And then I am going to go ahead and drag it back to my page. All right, dun da da da. So let's go ahead and click edit. So I just want to look at it before I save it. But even if I maximize, you can see like it pretty much has removed everything. All of these gray and white checks, those are the areas that it has removed. And I am good to go. I don't need to make any changes. If I needed to make changes and there was an area that it missed, on the right hand side, I click erase restore. If I needed to add 
or if I needed to erase something else to the image, I could click here. If it erased a part of the camel that I needed to put back, I would click restore and then I could go over it and bring it back. So anyway, it looks good. I'm gonna zoom back out and I'm going to click download, download my image. Then I'm gonna go back to my PowerPoint. I'm gonna get rid of these little cartoon animals that I know I don't like. And I'm then going to insert my new camel image from file. Again, it's going to download to my downloads, navigate there. The most recent is at the top. Hmm, that's not it, did I do? Oh, here it is. Kamal, my Kamal <laughs> with the removed background. Okay, it shows me the image right here and then I can insert it and look at that. I have this awesome camel that I can put anywhere in my image. Again, probably as you know, like foreground, background, I can make him smaller if I want him to be further away. I can position him wherever I want. In some programs, I may need to double click him and adjust his position. I always like to put in front of text as one of the layout options. Um, so that way I can move him anywhere on the page. All right, so I would repeat that for several organisms. And so that way I could have the minimum requirement. I think it was 10 or 12 in my food web. And then of course we would then insert shapes and I could then use arrows to go in my food web. I could double click on those and I could make my line bigger by looking at the weight. I could also make it a different color by clicking here and choosing another color for it to stand out. I could add my text as required, insert text box, and I could say he is a, hmm, what does he eat? He would be, what is with the A? My A is not working, friends. So I'm going to forever misspell everything today. And he will be a primary consumer. I believe that's what he eats. And I could drag it over and I could label him. I could even double click this and you can see up here at the fill, I could give that a colored background if I wanted my text to stand out. So again, make sure you're labeling your organisms, you're giving their uh, level in the food chain and you are adding your text and your arrows and providing enough organisms. When you're done, you, this is great for you just to have on each of your slides in your PowerPoint presentation. But if you wanted to, you could also, if you're using it for graphics purposes, you could then um, save as a picture and you could export your each slide as an image file to use somewhere else on the internet, on a website, um, in a graphic, as a graphic, um, as a poster and whatnot. So I really like using PowerPoint and its flexibility for adding graphics. If at the top, if you want to add word art, you would just of course do insert word art and go from there. I'll try to make this video again from a um, PC, Microsoft related Windows device when I get a chance, but hopefully this helps. I'll be back in a couple days to assist you if you need any more help with completing this project. Thanks so much and I hope you have a wonderful day.